Heroes. At yeah. this point, we've all we've all accepted it. Glaive is Polish, Ents is Polish, and they've got a dream to try and create here in Katowice. Yeah, Vitality have everything except Poland. So we'll see how much that advantage matters as the first kill goes the way of the Poles. Up on Vertigo, this used to be the map that Ents could count on no matter what else went wrong in a series. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, not Ents. Well, nine. 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 <laughs> Quick fight out from Zaiwu. That one gets denied. They're, they're trying to charge at this before Bomb goes down. They want all the blood. They want the blood shed. And, well, they lose their heads. It's Glaive. Of course it's Glaive. Coming off of his career highest HLTV rating the other day, taking down his ex-organization. It's been a great week for Glaive. And the way that he interviews, he's always just amazed when people are complimenting him. He's so gracious all the time four times major winner is sort of every day wakes up impressed at himself he's very he's a very humble guy you know he really does kind of take it he doesn't look to the past all he thinks about is what's coming up next and doesn't like to think about what he's accomplished previously and it's obviously a great way to be um and it doesn't preclude you from having the dark times like in the past few years like he said in astralis it wasn't great so he does feel like he has to prove himself again um and that's, that could take a lot of effort, that could take a little luck, that could take, you know, the right teammates. It's a lot of moving targets that you've got to figure out how to figure out. A shot from Mezzi, so Deagle's not looking like they're going to earn anything here. Pretty quick tempo out of Ents to try and convert pistol, and I like that. You know, we're talking about, you said it right, Vertigo's the thing that would always go well when they'd struggle in a series. And by struggle in the series, we mean lose Ancient. That was the consistency of Ents. But the beauty of it, or when I say Ents, I mean nine. Okay, for the record going forward tonight, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're really referring to the core that got picked up by Natu. Um, of course, this like, this like, Pretty off-the-cuff last-second signing when Ence's team started to dissolve, but it made total sense seeing as the nine core were going to be guaranteed a spot at the European RMR in the upcoming major cycle. So I think it was a good decision, and obviously you still had Diha on your team. That's just, I mean, Diha would have made it a great addition to nine at any at any time. Keeping Glaive, bringing in Cuban. Come on. These are, these are smart moves, but it does boil down to two players, in particular, speaking English for the first time on a yeah. team. Right? Um, in Goofy and in Kylar. It, Hades at least had already been with Ents. That makes total sense. I mean, it just, at first it took me off guard, but the more I kind of give Ents some credit, take a step back and give them a little time, they've left me well impressed. For sure. I mean, I think that's something that's been very nice from the offseason is Ents and Heroic are two teams that got screwed over big time. Mm -hmm. And they had to come up with rosters within a matter of days to make it for the RMRs. Not only did they come up with rosters in a matter of days, the RMRs, they came up with pretty damn decent rosters on paper. Yep. But rosters that even still didn't have that much expectations to show results quickly, and yet did. Yes, sir. So, Both of them having moved through the play-in, now playing at the group stage of Katowice. Full credit to them. They put together rosters that other teams could have taken months to put together yep. under way better circumstances and we'd still be impressed. Well, circumstances looked good here in round three for Ents, and suddenly we're talking about a five versus three to Vitality's favor. That original ramp peak from Flamesy off the Galil, Zaiwu catching a stray down ramp as well, Sphinx hitting a Deagle headshot, making it look all the easier, and uh-oh, the first speed bump of the night. Ents just losing out to a round that had two rifles at the start of it. And this is, I think, just... Another instance of the talent that goes from the top to the bottom of Vitality. Four players coming through with a frag. Flames getting caught out and figuring out what Glaive is up to. But we, we can't deny it, right? As much as we can sit here and praise Ents for making big moves quick. Vitality, number one team in the world. Bit of a scare to start the year versus Astralis, but a recovery already. Yeah, beating Astralis is, is impressive enough and... That's a, a nice memory for Glaive. Getting to the group stage by beating Mongols, that's also great. Not winning the clutch is, is not that great, but losing it to Vitality also is something that you can live with. And I think that the series will not be handed to them and they'll need to be playing their best CS of their tournament so far to take this win. And they'll have to probably also cross their toes and hope that Vitality are playing slightly worse than they usually do. Because that's the only way that an upset like this can happen. The bottom line is Vitality are that bar right now. Yes, sir. 
Bar set high in round three. Again, two rifles come in. All of Ents go down. Team Vitality with a quick, easy answer on the CT side of, of course, Ents' map pick. If we're talking about teams that are likely to win this entire event in order, it goes something like Vitality, and then who knows? <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? And that, yeah. that just shows you how powerful Vitality are in a world where so many teams are good, but no clear favorites. Diha trying to make quick work of the crane play, but it's Apex ready to hold back. And Apex had, I think, a quieter start to the year in contrast to the end of 2023. He had a, two fantastic LAN events to close out the year. And then maybe our, all, our, all our expectations got a little too high. So easy for him to get this opening duel versus Diha. You want a strong start from the, each of the individuals of Vitality. And I think we're going to see levels of confidence come out from Vitality this evening in this head-to-head. -head. Plays like this one from Flamesy, who goes down ramp, who's got great shadow advantage over the bridge. Those shadows casting forward and giving him all the info he needs to keep him blocked off. I'm sure Ents right now just feels suffocated here in the fourth round. Maybe they get Goofy out middle. Maybe Zywu gives them room. But to ask for room from Zywu. Who the hell are you? Sphinx looks to tether off him. Nice coverage given out from Glaive. Zywu Ooh, right back at it. That's God. snap. Damn. Mm, a little flick of the wrist and uh, ça suffit. That's that. Tied up at two. C'est magnifique. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Apex kicks it off. Diha, you know, doesn't play Xbox with the headshot angle waiting for the push, but definitely, you know, climbing up and exposes himself entirely. <laughs> he said it won't take long. So a quick snap back to reality. Glocks for Ents. These poor guys don't even have a flashbang. And a round without a flashbang is barely a round worth playing, Mohan. I know, like 50 bucks? Says he could have been blind. Well, okay. Maybe they paid one of his teammates. Oh, 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 God, it's good. It's good. It's just pistols, but it's a nice sign for Mezzi, I think, to have an uptick at the start of this map. Uh, Mezzi is. I would put him in the same boat as Apex. Finishing the year strong, giving us these high hopes that Vitality are untouchable. And then a quick dose of reality, as this year wasn't the best. But easy hold versus Glocks. Get Mezzi's confidence up, get that B-Site anchor rolling. And then Sphinx, who's going to be found in middle more often than not. The two of them can tether off one another. And I think this defense becomes impenetrable. Yeah, he sometimes they just like Vitality and history. And history in the last three years, like since 2021, mm -hmm. have had very high peaks and also just random troughs out of nowhere. Um, they've just been so infrequent now that you don't see it as much, but like that other game at Blast, uh, like last week, that was already sort of like, wait, what? They go that low, even on a random uh, after the break event. But then we remember that they are still dealing with new players. Okay, Come Apex. On. Okay. Come on. Just a shot through the smoke and a quick chase from Flames. That's a team flash. Who threw that? It was a double agent, though. It hit, hit them both. Sketchy, sketchy. Mezzi leaning back beyond the fire. Supportive utility could be inbound. He's got a teammate already up front. And Ensel cool their jets. Kyler said, don't wait up, and then drop the bomb. Pretty consistent bottom ramp control from Vitality. We are early days in the CT side, but we've seen Flames prod it twice already, so, back to back. Some, something's wrong here. Kyler doesn't have any utility, and they don't have the bomb. So I don't know what his presence is going to do at 35 seconds, but yeah, unless they're coming back. Mm, yep, it got to be. Likely, here we go. Bringing it back. So now Goofy becomes the solo on A. Oof, eats that flashbang. Barrels back slightly. 15 seconds. CT's 
They are still very much in this B site. Spinks holding on to close, but ooh, nice headshot from Kylar. Mezzi off construction gets the one. Goofy pulling a thread towards the A site makes things interesting, but that's what they needed. A kill that establishes the fallback from the site if needed. Apex, he's kept an eye on it. Can confidently assume nobody's back quad. Green, a high likelihood, and it is indeed occupied by Kylar. Support behind him from Hades. No more utility, but two rifles ready to hold off what's left of this retake. Nice, quick swing out from Apex and Hades. He allows for them to cross over, hoping to catch him off guard. Krieg hits the headshot nice and swiftly. Oh. And as he tries to keep his head down, Flamesy takes it off, coming through with Vitality's force. Ooh, got nervous seeing Flamesy be that tall. Decided to crouch, made it really awkward for his spray. Nice first shot from Hades, but no clutch right now. Vitality will take a fourth after a clean and confident retake in the 2v2. This is where we kick it off with the Apex smoke ramp spam. Poor Diha just in transition down there. A couple of the angles that are getting that got used in this round are like they're not really valid right now with the way CS2 is. I think like that, like generator position, for example, you're gonna get it pre-fired so easily right there. You have to time your swings basically every fight at the moment. So when you see someone sitting dead on what used to be a really good angle, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, same thing with Spinks, so you can almost precipitate him dying, but that was almost for a different reason. Not just because he's getting pre-fired, but also because people are walking out clearing quad on that same line. So sure. you could get incidental, basically. Yeah, you're basically standing in the middle of traffic. Yeah. You could be invisible and still die, essentially. So he gets laser beamed. Luckily, Mezzi did catch one on the crossover, so it's not both B defenders down empty-handed, just the one. And luckily for Ents as well, the guns keep on coming. A few Galils with this follow-up in the Krieg. I like the trend of offers buying Kriegs. Glaive tries to take a peek off Xbox, will find Flamesy. Just like that. Opening kill, man advantage. Ents got something to work with. Still some utility too. But will the B players get a little frisky? Kylar tucked in. He was on his own, but now Glaive has come to join him with a third player just behind them, and Bomb not far off either. They're looking to get into the B play, but this corner occupied by Mezzi nets them nothing. Wow. Perfectly pulled apart here in the B site, and an excellent round for Ents to add to their collection. Zaiwu thinking about middle, takes a ton of damage. His nade goes in deep. There's a dual one by Apex on the A site. Do Vitality take the chance at this retake? Whoa. Health has been chipped down low on two players. They don't know about all of it. As I would have been feeling pretty good about that nade, I'm sure. Knowing the bomb got planted right after. But this smoke should solidify. Yeah, incendiary as well, right? You want to push through that? There's a sea of flames that awaits you. And I'm not talking about your teammate, Zaiwu. Ooh, catches Hades. He knows the other one's behind the box. Here they go, oh. pressing in. And it falls on Glaive with his 16 health to swing. He gets the bomb diffuser off, and the time's going to decide this time. Apex, he could not afford to take that bullet to the face. Smoke comes up a little bit late. Glaive isolating the duel and winning this one out for Ents. I don't know how they got that close to winning the round. I thought they were just going to give up because of time alone, but... Uh, Kills kept coming their way. Leave it to Zaiwu to find a way. Was an effort right there, but it also costs Ents greatly. Escaping with zero players alive. And uh, right in the middle of a half, their economy is fragile. At least they have D side. Again, though, this ramp fight so consistent and more often than not to the favor of Vitality. Glaive, Glaive, I love it. Glaive's been consistent on this ramp fight in more than just this match. He's been very good on Vertigo for this. Dude, his individual level has, has taken me off guard. Man, 2018, he was a top 10 player in the world. But when we saw him play for Astralis before his departure, the fall off was hard to watch. Yeah. To come back into it with this Ents camp, to post that map on Ancient versus Astralis that he did. I mean, I never, I never in, I didn't think it was in the cards. I didn't think it was any, I didn't think it was possible any longer. No disrespect. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't know. I still don't know if it is. I think he's saying that he has a lot to prove and it's because he does. 
if he wants to say that, he uh, he can say that, of course. That's just being real, though. The results are the only thing that matters. So, in terms of what we rate right now, I would never get excited about three months of individual level or anything. Zero tournament. You know, like, I made a video in July talking about, like, Navi and how I rated the roster. It was, it was like, not good. Not good, basically. And people are really excited about Navi, like, today, because they've actually done so much better. And it's like, yeah, but they still haven't won anything. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, getting excited about, like, a week of form, basically. Mm. So, yeah. I guess I can be excited about Glaive and Entz right now. But in terms of his career, no one will be talking about this. It will only be the results. Whether it's actually making it to playoffs, whether it's being a top 20 player again. Something along those lines. We'll give it more time. For now, it's a nice flash in the pan. Yeah, or any tournament wins. Mm. Oh, Saiwu not allowed to hold on to his gun. There we go. Cuban bringing the heat to the Ents camp as this game gets tied up for a piece. Glaive's clean double entry around the side of the ramp smoke. That was in a 4v5. He offers up the solution. Takes back control of the ramp. Takes back control of the round. Ties things up and puts Vitality's money in question. A potential turning point for the first map in this series. Again, it's a glance down ramp, but much less here from Entz to be pulled on. Still got to keep showing this presence, and I think that conditioning is because of the consistency of Flamesy out of the gate in this map, of taking that forklift room, of not just looking down ramp, but pushing down ramp and compromising Entz's back line. So Diha's going to serve as the anchor as Glaive serves as the entry. Just dueling Sphinx and putting Sphinx down to a 1-9 and nine score. Mm. Glaive is, uh, well, he's right behind Zaiwu in terms of top performers right now. They try to shuffle that M4A1S into the B site ahead of the execute, but there is no follow through from Entz just yet. They've got a great amount of map control, comfortable positions, top, middle, bottom A, and of course, majority sat outside the B hit. No rush yet. And by waiting long enough, that M4 did indeed depart the site. Now just leaning on Mezzi, whose position gets predicted. Kylar, quick crack with the AK. And this one starts to slip away from Vitality. Big time. D-Hub, easy plant. Zaiwu's top mid challenge could have gotten him a gun, but him dying out takes away any real chance. And this is Entz with a one round lead. It's very nice. And yeah, I mean, pretty much brought to you by Glaive and those X Factor frags that he's gotten on entries. Though he does have a very good team with him. Five Polish legends over on Ents right now. I think he was excited about getting a passport. But maybe he's got to be a little scared they won't let him leave right, that's when fair. they make it to playoffs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're going to lock him in the Spodek for the next year. Yeah. Here you go, Glaive. Here's your new home. We're going to see him fighting Pasha next year. <laughs> you match it. <laughs> We've always said we wanted to see us boxing matches. And then he'll be biking to majors when he retires. It's all around the corner, folks. 2024 is set to be a hell of a year. I don't even know how that all ties together, but... But we're making promises. Leave it to Lukash. Everything I've heard about Cuban, and everything I know about Glaive, this does seem like a pretty fearsome combo. Mm. I mean, we were there in Abu Dhabi when it all went down, <laughs> and they basically lost their roster, and they yes, had to, they had 24 hours to find a team before the RMRs, and uh, they had to just go, oh well, just gotta watch a lot of a lot of demos right now to find new teammates because we don't have much time. Uh, but every step of the way, it seems like they've just been working their asses off to like
not only find the team, but then also make it good enough to work. Yes. Which, that's the thing about results. No one will ever understand how hard the practice or effort was before you won anything. So when you see somebody win something in circumstances like this under maximum duress, then you go, wow, they must have been working. Saiwu with the open sight down tarp, but no peek around the corner yet. It's a way low util buy, no op in play for Vitality, big opportunity for Enz. Smoke fading, exposes the one in the open. Flamesy just taking straight up duels. Zywu looking to trade frag this as Apex also goes down. That's two picks. He leans all the way back. Instant Ooh. dink from Hades on the Galil, and Zywu sent sailing. See ya. That ramp setup gets completely dismantled, and now Enz are poised to take an excellent lead. As we are just left here kind of scratching our heads, asking, where has Spinks got off to? This B anchor has gotten a few kills at times. While well, the ramp control was working out for Vitality out of the gate, this has just turned back upside down. Mezzi, nothing. As three players try to face him into the B site, wow. it's going to have to be Spinks 1v4. They're right in front of him, and he gets nothing either. Four Let's strong. Ents uh, strong. Hell yeah. Was it the last half? Was it versus Mongols where they were 9 3 up? Or that wasn't even. That was Anubis, I think. They've had some pretty strong first halves, though, I've seen. Oh, that's gross. Oof, right now before the jump. That. Yep. That's good. That's justice. That was Apex going down right after Flamesy, who decided to take the open fight on ramp. That was actually the only, I think the only way Vitality could have won right there was the dry duels on the ramp while they were both peaking. So, Ants fought them on their turf and won. Ooh, Apex even lucky to be alive here. Meant to be the kingpin of round 11 for Vitality. That one MP9, the only primary in play. Kylar awaits the headshot to be given over. I think Kylar deserves some recognition. Obviously, there's two names that come into the spotlight with switching to an English-speaking team and him and Goofy. And while Goofy has left slack on the table, his individual level falling off after being the second highest rated player for the nine core back at, say, Cologne of last year. This isn't quite the same Goofy. This flank is crazy. I was not seeing anything. He's only going to find one on B steps. The rotations, therefore, are not coming in oh, just he yet. He doesn't even know about this one guy. Yeah, this works out very well for Enz. Just missed the timing. There could have been a deagle in their back. And instead, Zywu trying to chase the A ramp play now. It's a little bit too late. Apex tries to spam through smoke, gets nothing for his efforts. Two deagles that are indeed in a position to pinch all this. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> through the floor. Uh. Hades takes it to the face, survives and responds, and Mezzi, far too much to ask of him here in round 11. Looking for something, a, a kill, anything to take Ents down a peg, but they are looking strong. And it all comes down to some nasty timing. Yes. Zywu, poor guy chasing ghosts towards that B site. Yeah, could have got a little, I mean, it's the player who could maximize a flank like that with a pistol, that would have been him for sure. But uh, gotta say, Ents, making fewer and fewer mistakes by the day, which you have to appreciate. Do I have to appreciate that? The running, side strafing, full AK spray headshot through smoke? I don't want to appreciate no, it. No, I don't think you have to appreciate that. Okay. He can take it. He can run with it. And Flamesy's going to try to put a quick end to what has been relatively consistent success out of Ents throughout the middle of this half on ramp. Opening kill for Vitality. It's been quite some time. Got to make sure they make the most of it here. This half has fizzled out after what was a pretty convincing start. 4-2 at one point. Five straight from Ents so far. But how do they claw back a man disadvantage again? Boost into B. Mezzi better not be on that same angle again. 
plays this pillar pretty often, and I feel like it's gotten predicted at least twice. Flamesy set up and waiting for the crane walk up, but if Glaive comes around short, this will avoid him. Apex, nice headshot though. They disassemble the boost instantly. Trying to hold on to this 5v3 to close out the half. We've got 25 seconds left for Ents to get their eighth. And it's gonna come down to the ramp hit, bomb included. Apex pressing along. Gets his thing, <laughs> sketchy. He doesn't get that kill, it's kind of weird. And oddly enough, it still leaves the possibility of the round win here in the hands of Entz. There's a trade frag from the back line as Hades gets one and survives on a single point of health. Kylar, what does he do? He's gotta plant the bomb, no other choice. They go for the spam, they deny it, and this one just gets a little wacky. Mistakes were made. Hades survives the half on a single point of health. It's a fifth added to Vitality's tally before they take to the T side. running away does get run down by grim good frag but i mean yeah it's uh it's a not a particularly appealing retake i think with these upgrades right so there's a famous that hauser can get into instead definitely go back for the famous son you've already got the adp in the hands of grim i would love to see hauser find the rifle instead of having the scout in play You've got time to do so as yeah, well i'm just gonna see if i can go and find it because it shouldn't be that hard to find one of his teammates just had it so hopefully he goes back and looks to pick it up. Yeah, it's in it's in the monster pipe. It's huh. just it's just there in front of him, in front of that little cinder block. Well, he's yeah, kind of, perfect, Jay. He's kind of running out. Is he gonna go great? You. Oh. Okay. Maybe yeah, uh, just uncomfortable on the on the rifle after that previous round. No, but he's gonna get the ult from Grim. Uh, so it could be right, nice so, and for someone. If you had the Famas, then yeah, yeah, they could, yeah. you know, and, and then at this point, you've got the AK as well. So you, you could have had two rifles and an M uh, and the AWP, sorry, and you, you don't really need to upgrade anything else. You could just maybe get to a 5.7, a, a P250, something along those lines. Now Grim's going to hold on to the AWP. How's that going to wield the scout? Maybe it'll work. 10 10. Grim's trying to connect a plate. Forced away. By the flames, that's Anito hearing this. Space conceded. Staying active is Grim, well aware of the power position he currently occupies. Jump spot out of Sats. Anito goes a step too wide. It's Grim, first blood. Apparently it's Grim and Elise having to do everything. Oh yeah, they got these boys in their backpack, 22 and 23 respectively. Well, they're rotating towards B, away from the AWP quite swiftly. Denied towards Monster with the smoke. Grim's joined the party. Floppy is here with the AK, and this would be a time for him to get a multi. They're having a dialogue. Nork shaking his head. Three members of Cole on this side of Jacob, taking a closer look at his AK. Now was not the time. Two left. It seems like Cole making it work. That may be Chad. It hinges on Nork. Can he disrupt? 20 HP. Sensors hit a great shot. JT's the down. Entz making the group stage with a Polish core after years of no Polish representation, and they are not wasting this opportunity. A good amount of A-ramp control coming out of Glaive, and a turnaround from the start of this map as Vitality started strong. They are now up 7-5 and beginning the CT endeavor with Glaive at the top of the scoreboard again. Polish, Pol Polska Goro, baby. We said Polish cow. That's just a funny song. What is the direct translation again? 
uh, for Pulse Gorum. Yeah. It's uh, Poland strong. Just like amazing Poland. Something like that. Hold on, let me see. Okay. Sign me up. Ooh, look at this booby trap setup. We got Hades with his head down. We got Goofy up top with Beretta's. Glaive's going to draw the attention out. Oh, you think this is going to go well, Vitality, but you're wrong. Chewed through like it's nothing. Four kills and even Mezzi flashed as he tries to get anything going back. That could not have been better. Uh, Polish Mountain, apparently. That set up the layers. The Berettas off the boxes, I mean perfection. And Mezzi comes out into the B site, looking for anything to be proud of here. Ents are absolutely taking this opportunity versus the world's number one. And Vitality are going to have to get to work sooner than later. Sorry, Mezzi, you got an entire camp of players on the other side of it. You got that slow flank coming from the last piece. This is a perfectly placed pistol setup. Glaive calls it quick. And Entz, the momentum doesn't stop now. Ooh, ooh. no, it does not. It was Apex at the beginning of the game saying, sit down. It's not over yet. He said it's only beginning. Well. They haven't had anything since. Maybe he's the one who wants to get up. There's a conversation to be had within this game, of course. We are talking about Apex on one side, the in-game leader of the year in 2023, versus Glaive, one of the best in-game leaders to ever do it. Yeah, I think his... Um one thing he was always criticized was for how many players he had to win with or whatever. Although if you have a good team, why would you make the roster move, right? That's sort of the, the silly part of that. But one thing that he's, I personally always know about him is he's extremely adaptable because he, every time he talks about a new teammate or somebody, somebody else in terms of learning something, he is always open to novel ideas about how to approach the game. Whether it was taking advice from teammates that he had on his roster or when he switched from Kirby to Magisk, he said it's always good to learn from like the new players, young players' way of learning, learning the game. Even when he was younger, that's the same way he would look at it. So, seems like the idea of CS2 being brand new would actually be a good fit for somebody like him. Goofy under pressure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Apex gets the charge going. Ooh, the Tech Nines got close. I'll give them that. Diha and Kyla are almost killed, but SMGs tear them up. You've got Zywu alive, which means you've got problems still if you're Ents. All his teammates are dead, but he's got a 1v3 nearly wrapped up already. Diha and Kyla. Oh, that softening damage not going to mean too much. Ents win another one the full buy means nothing for vitality they don't get the bomb plant they don't get those kills close on generators that they needed and so this one continues to fall away from them yeah we're, we're getting into stomp territory now oh yeah and there was uh, some investment there i think that's vitality still aren't really thinking about losing until next round and uh, I don't think Ents are thinking about winning till the game's over. So at least that's a good thing with them. Even their match versus the Bongols, they were super locked in front to back. Because it is MR12 and they are the team that are going to suffer amazing upsets and vi oh, upsetting victory, upsetting upsets, excuse me. Beautiful timing from Mezzi on the first kill. We saw that jump over the wood wall, but even on the jump, he didn't see Mezzi just slide under him. So the Tech Nines burst through to the B site again, setting up the possibility of the plant. We get Apex's Deagle finding a mark, but fast flank wastes no time. Diha getting back the man advantage, leaving just these Whittled down Tech 9 players, the hopes and dreams of Vitality, looking for that plant still alive as Flames goes deep over the Ooh, smoke he into got the CT out. spawn and very quickly over towards A with an M4 to work with. Yeah, no one cutting off his cross. He knew exactly what he wanted to do in that moment, which makes me feel like he, he's quite sharp about how he's going to play this out in the end. His big problem is, is, of course, his HP, and he's chosen to sit on the bomb, so... 
thing is, the two normal options would be short or, or on the ramp here for the CTs to try to clear him out. That means he needs to take one headshot fight fast. But honestly, he doesn't have room to escape from the other. I mean, both of them are going to have to be headshots. There's one. Oh my goodness. Oh man, back into the cover, confirming Hades too. Flames swings and Hades Ooh. makes sure. Not today. Not this time. Not as Ents continue to collect a 10th round of the board. Although timing almost works out greatly there for Vitality. Have to say it, Mezzi had a golden ticket to get into that B site. It got Flames up and over the smoke, escaping with the M4. Bomb plant will help if Vitality are going to come back into this map. But I do respect Diha, a triple kill on the B flank. Definitely keeping this one in control for Ents. And yeah, you see Hades shake it off. High pressure situation for him to close that 1v1 versus a very capable aimer in Flamesy. Yeah. And Hades also had some tr struggles in high-pressure situations, usually with the op. He just misses, has a dull shot and a big round sometimes. That unfortunately has become sort of a part of his brand. And then hopefully that can change. And I also think that's something that Glaive could potentially help with as well. Like, Glaive is the reason that the Vice stopped choking famously and brought him his first major. So, he recovered the what it what became the strongest brand in CS, Astralis, for the later part of that game. Someone like Hades could use that. Somebody who has massive talent, has had such big maps playing under Snappy, but has also choked. Sphinx doesn't want to get into it top middle. A consistent piece Sorry, is late lurks. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, I am saying Snappy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And Snappy. It's been a couple of roster moves since. I was making the <laughs> Ends 9 thing again. Okay. That was messing me up because of d -ha. Oh, Kylar. Ahead of it as well, right? That smoke's up. T's are thinking, nah, they're going to give us a little room. I do like that Ends get disruptive with it. Comfortable 5v3 here, cutting one off of the cross. Kylar Goofy combining again, and no entry, none allowed. Spinks gets the headshot as Zaiwu falls empty handed. That is only Spinks' second kill of this map. His nade, ooh, nearly finishing off Goofy, but that is an 11th out of Ents, and as previously said, we are deep in the territory of a stomp. Yeah, we are. Yeah, and, and with a 2 and 14 score line, I mean, that only amplifies. The issues, I guess, on the side of Ents. It is looking fantastic on the side of Vitality. There are numerous problems, and uh, especially when the right-hand man of the server can't get it going in a match where he's expected to. It's going to make every round hit a little harder. What an opportunity Glaive is giving these young men. Every Polish player dreams of a chance in the Spodek, and it is still a difficult journey to get there, but this is the first step, the quickest road ahead. And the pundits have considered Group B to be the one open for the taking. Sixteen kills on Glaive, fifteen frags on Kylar, and a huge buy advantage here for Ents to try and establish that 12-5 lead. Glaive trying to get his contact down ramp, nothing really rolling. Low utility for Vitality in this round. Double smoke and a flashbang. That's not to mention again, just two guns. Uh oh, Miss CT smoke. It's a bit thin. Here we go, Apex over the top. Oh, D a beautiful Ooh. triple kill like it's nothing. Mezzi's gonna get the one wow. D in, but this is an immovable, rock solid version of Ents. You, you really, you really oh. don't want to get too excited about, you know. Any map in CS2 that doesn't finish, but now that it's 12 to 5, and you see the plays that are happening, they're only growing in momentum. It's like, wow. Looking back on all the previous maps that Ents have had at this event, 
how much better they're getting too day by day has just been really, really nice to watch. And now their biggest, strongest competition going down, maybe the fastest as well. Insanity that this is such a blowout. Felt like 10 minutes ago that Apex told them to sit down and warn them that it was only getting started. Little did he realize that was the end of Vitality's success. Yeah, maybe Vitality wished they got started sooner. So missed out on some progress. This is now 10 of the last 11 rounds added to the board for Ents. A one-off in the middle of it all, but at least this time, Flamesy gets the quick entry on A before any other piece is really in place. Ents far more adamant about B and mid. Goofy and Haiti is only working with the $700 to spare, so maybe with the way A falls this quick, it is just an easy save call. Yeah, they were ready for an attack right then. I mean, if they were going to, you would never play. Well, to be honest, that could have been a, a slight mistake, right? It, it, they should have been either playing retake or from some very unexpected position late round or something uh, to play a 4-1 set setup like this. But they were definitely not not expecting or hoping that it was going to be the A ramp. So really minimal losses here for Ents. Let it go. So what? Apex catches you with a little off timing. I think there's a very expected Apex call, though, to say when we're losing this much, all right, wake up. You know, it's time to go. Let's get something done. Well, they'll need more than that one. Still trailing by six. And a map one win on the line each and every step of the way here for Ents. So cool to see Glaive's name at the top of that board. You, know, you do it once, you think it's just a flash in the pan, a throwback to times long gone. But here he is, taking a chunk out of Vitality tonight. d -Hut trying to open up, but it's Hades from the short side, double Ooh, through the tarp. Talk to him. Sets him down. And a 5v3 to try and lock in map one. Mezzi looking to reopen the possibility of Vitality extending this opening map. But my god, does this look bleak. Not just bleak, but at times uninspired. Back into this slower pace, the tempo and the utility. It just sets a precedent and it puts vitality back. Like walking through sludge towards this A site. As D has set up on sandbags, he will peek into Sphinx. And that headshot fast enough to put the A play under question. Glaive pushes ahead of the smoke grenades, wants to hold off on short, but he made movements and sound on the way in, so they're on high alert. They have been corralled to the crane. This is their only option in. Sphinx versus Glaive. He loses the duel to the Danish IGL. And as Mezzi's hands are busy, Flames has to give good cover. The threat of that smoke push was high, but nobody actually comes through. We've got one on headshot, keeping his head down as they have lost track of Glaive. He works back around the crane. He knows oh, that's his squeezed. teammate. Yeah, he knows he's been squeezed. That's perfect. a perfect play. Sat down by Tarp. He goes back into them, softening them up and trying to end this. But Flamesy, he comes back around fighting. Goofy's got one. Hades the last. And just like that, we've got Ents map up over Vitality. Ladies and gentlemen, Poland in Katowice is a whole other beast. This core has taken a real chunk out of Vitality. And I'm not talking about squeezing some 13-11 off the board. A stomp to kick off this best of three.